Welcome back, Life Sciences. From that small break, get the blood flowing, get the oxygen flowing. This mammalian tissue can be quite a ride. All right, what are we looking at? Mammalian, animal tissue, me. All right, what am I made of? And we looked, the first tissue that we looked at was epithelial tissue. That tissue was quite easy, all right, to identify, to see. And basically, what did we have? Those of you who've built Lego before, it was quite simply, you have this base and you put the cells one on top of each other. The next tissue that we're going to look at is somewhat more difficult, all right, to identify each time because the structure is slightly different. Okay, so guys, when we look at connective tissue, I want you to understand this concept, have in the back of your head here. I want you to build the following. I want you to have the following with you. I want you to have uh, maybe some water, All right? You might need the following things, cement, the water, or the jelly. I want you to have an elastic band with you. I want you to have a piece of string with you. And I want you to take an egg and I want you to take all the stuff out and have a hollow eggshell. I just want you to have that with you because that's how we're going to make connective tissue. Unlike all the cells being so neatly in a row here, connective tissue, right, is totally different. It has a totally different structure. Now, what does connective tissue do? It connects, right? As we're going to see, it connects. And when I say it connects, it's going to connect one structure with another. It might bind or support something, all right? It might be as, as simple as an insulator, and it could transport. And as I said to you, we're going to play around with all of these things when we look at connective tissue. Guys, it's the most abundant tissue. It's the tissue that's pretty much going to be found everywhere. Now, the first tissue that we look at, right, now I want you to build the following. I want you to take a container, I want you to put water in, I want you to put jelly in. Then I want you to put a string in, then I want you to put elastic band in, and then I want you to drop, I don't know, you can take something, I don't know, um, let's take, what would you have lying around your house? If you do have Lego, you're just going to pop it in. If you don't have Lego, you can just find any kind of thing, shape that you can put into it. What have you got? You've got nothing. No pattern whatsoever. But that's exactly, all right, what we're going to find. This tissue is called areola connective tissue. And basically the jelly, all of this is in a jelly. And what do we find in the jelly? The strings are going to be tough. You can't move them. However, what else are you going to have? You're going to have elastic bands. What can elastic do? In and out. What are those things that you're going to pop in? They're going to be cells. And what this layer does over here, guys, is that it binds the skin to the body. It also binds all the different organs. Very often I talk to my class about this burevos layer. What do I mean by burevos layer? And if you look at your chicken wing when it's raw as well, if you pick it up, go take the skin, and if you pick it up, underneath is like a, a white see-through layer that you can't really see that it's there, but you know it's there. What I call it the burevos layer is that I can see like there's a layer on the outside, and it's thin, 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 and it's keeping everything in but it's not as obvious as my burevos. So next time you play with your chicken wing, just take the fat out, your skin, and just have a look underneath there. And we call this loose connective tissue. And the reason why it's called loose connective tissue is that it's the fibers. If you have a look here, look at the white, you can see a lot of the matrix, right? This is the most abundant tissue. Now, what happens is underneath the skin, what I can find is, if I go back here, 
Do you see I put a lot of cells in here? What cells could I have? I can have white blood cells. Why? Because if I cut myself, what does my body need to do? It needs to be able to protect it, right? So I've got these white blood cells. What else do I have underneath? Aha, uh -huh. I've got fat. Now guys, have a look here. They round and what does my body do when I do all the excess carbohydrates in the lipids? They are changed to this fat and there's my nucleus underneath. So adipose tissue, fat tissue, all right, is underneath my skin, but it's important because it's there to insulate. I found that, that layer around my organs, it's important because it insulates. I find it around my nerve cells. Why? So I conduct a dry. Okay. However, if I eat too much and it fills up, it can be bad for me. All right. That is adipose connective tissues. Now the next one that we look at, and these are, are very difficult to identify, but I want you now to take the string or the elastic. Now if I put a lot of string together, all right, they are the fibers, can you see here? All of those, they string. And there we go, there's the cells, because we have to make the tissue. But what's the difference between a string or a rope and an elastic band? All right, string is tough and I can't move, it's strong. Elastic can stretch and come back again. So, all depending on what I put in, I've still got the jelly, do I put a lot of strong fibers or do I have a little bit of elasticity? That is what I'm looking at when I look at dense connective tissue. So guys, why have I got this over here? All right. Very important, what does a ligament do? A ligament connects bone to bone. See, we're looking at connective tissue. What does a tendon do? It connects muscle, all right, to bone, connective tissue. Now, if I put fibers, if I make them nice and strong, what do I do with a joint? I make that joint nice and strong. I stabilize my joints. It's connective tissue, but what do I do? I make that joint nice and strong. And you guys know if you twist it, oh, then I really hurt it and I damage it. But what have I got? Lots of fibers. I want that area to be nice and strong. Okay, again, look at this, all right? It's yellow elastic. The reason why it's yellow, obviously I've stained it again. Now, you're like thinking, oh, how is this different to the previous one? Guys, they are wavy, right? These are elastic fibers. They can expand and, right, they stretch. Look where I've put them. Look where I put it. I put it in my lungs, because what do my lungs need to do? I need to inhale and I need to exhale, right? So what do my lungs need to be able to do? stretch and then return back again. So again, what do I find? A lot of fibers, less matrix. Matrix is my jelly. And what are all of these cells over here? All of those cells are going to be, all right, um, examples of that. Now the last tissue we're looking at is going to be cartilage. So guys, cartilage, all right, is tissue Again, look here, but what do I have this time? I'm looking at my eggshell. And my eggshell, I've got cartilage cells inside of them. And the different cartilage that I'm going to find, highline cartilage, look at your chicken bone, your nose. I'm going to see fibro cartilage, where I need a lot of support in my intervertebral discs. All right, and then I'm going to have this yellow elastic cartilage where I need it to be in my ear where I've got these cells, but I've got the cartilages that are going to go with it.